Okay, last one, guys. So I'm going to try and get you excited about databases. Has anyone ever been excited about databases? Oh, I'm preaching to the converted. Okay, so who here, just to give me an idea of the audience, who here is a software developer? Or ops? Who's a salesman? Oh, no. Uh, there's at least one salesman. Okay. So everything I'm going to speak about right now is open source. However, if you want a nice packaged version of some of the things I'm going to talk about with support, then you're probably going to end up speaking to the company I work for, which is Datastacks. Okay? So, okay, I'm going to click this all right. So I work for Datastacks. I'm a technical evangelist, which means I go around and talk to us. Okay? I do these kind of talks. Um, I've only recently just started doing that, and before that, I used to build lots and lots of things with Cassandra. So everything I'm about to talk about, I've actually done at large scales as well. So we'll, we'll, who's used Cassandra? Anyone? Yes, two. Who's heard of it? There you go. That's a good coverage. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I won't go over Cassandra for too long, because actually it's a, a good amount of the audience have heard of it. Who here has used Spark? A few heard of Spark? Yeah, different few. Awesome. I know some of the people who have used it haven't heard of it, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> who here has actually tried to experiment about connecting the two? So Cassandra and Spark, we have one. Okay. Hopefully, after this talk, when you get home, there'll be more of you, and you'll start tinkering with it. So it's good fun. Okay. So Cassandra, if you haven't heard of it, you've probably used it. Okay. It backs things like Spotify and Netflix. We had to talk about Internet of Things. You know, it is used a lot for sensor data, okay? You're not going to install Cassandra on a Raspberry Pi that we do for some reason at demos, but you are going to take the data from those devices and get it, and it's going to end up being Cassandra. Because it's particularly good for time series data. And the gaming industry have started using it a lot because one of the main use cases of it is deploying it across multiple data centers. So when you heard about the AWS talk, Netflix, for instance, deploy it in multiple regions throughout the world, active, active. So, if you pick something like a graph database, okay, you might be picking that because your data model fits in, okay? Maybe you're doing something like social networking. Or, if you pick, say, a relational database, it might be because you want to do ad hoc queries and reporting style. The type of data which fits in Cassandra really nicely is ordered data. And the most common type of order data is time series, okay? So we're talking about financial transactions, sensor data. Or you can just use it as a, I hesitate to use document store, but just for storing like entities, objects, and use it more of a, a key value lookup. However, nearly everyone I speak to who uses Cassandra haven't, hasn't picked it because it matches their data model, they've picked it because of non-functional requirements, okay? So when I started using it at my last company, it was because we wanted a database that we could have active-active across multiple data centers, and we wanted to write in the order of 10 to 20,000 TPS into it. The other main reason for picking it was um, Cassandra can pretty much scale as you throw more hardware at it. Okay? And the business that we were building, which was internet television in the UK, not surprisingly, people have started doing that more. Who'd have thought? Okay? So we had, I think, 500,000 concurrent users when we started the project. The year before that, it was 200,000, and we were predicting that it would go up to a million, two million. So we needed a data store that would scale like that, you know, less so caring about exactly what the data model was. So if there was just a whole talk about Cassandra, and we had an whole hour for that, we'd be going into the Dynamo paper, written by our friends at Amazon, who have already talked about it. But we don't have time for that, but we are going to pick out the important bits that make it that the important bits that are relevant for if you want to start doing analytics on top of your Cassandra data using Spark. Okay, so Cassandra from the, the ground up is multi data center. Each Cassandra node knows which data center it's in and where it routes your queries and which clients connect to it, it's going to be clever about it. You know, your application in the Europe is not going to connect to a node in America, okay? But the data, when it does write data into Europe, it is going to get asynchronously replicated into America. Ordinarily, you would want to do that because um, either your clients were close, you wanted to have your clients close, 
or for fault tolerance. So many Cassandra users want to be able to handle a full data center going down, be it an earthquake, a flood, or an ops guy pulling out a cable. Okay? But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about using that functionality to segregate parts of our operational database to do analytics on top. So it's all good and well saying, okay, I can do MapReduce on top of my Couchbase or my Oracle, okay? But if you're using that database as like backing your website or your app or anything, if you start running analytical jobs on it, it's going to destroy the performance, okay? Because they're going to be vastly more queries and bigger queries than anything else. And a massive strength of Cassandra is what you can do is we can segregate a few nodes, call them a different data center, even if they happen to be sitting in the same data center, and we're going to run Spark, we're going to run analytical jobs just on those nodes. The reason that we want to get into using something like Spark is because Cassandra has some quite serious limitations. But it has those limitations for really good reasons. Okay? So I've talked about picking Cassandra for non-functional requirements. And that basically means you know, we want performance. So that is our you know, response time to reads and writes. And scalability. We want to keep those low response times regardless of how big we make our Cassandra cluster. Be it 10 nodes or be it Netflix with 2,000. Okay? And the way that works, the way it does it, is that virtually all your queries when you hit a Cassandra cluster are going to go directly to the correct node and they're going to do ideally no more than one disk seek. They might do two, they might do three. And as you add more data or you add more throughput, you know, the work is spread out evenly across the nodes. But the obvious limitation that, that brings is a database like Cassandra is never going to allow you to do what you would think are simple in a relational database. Imagine spreading your customer events, say an order table, across 100 Cassandra nodes, and then asking Cassandra, what's the max, what's the min, how about you average those for me? That's not going to be a performance query. It might work if you have one node, two nodes, three nodes, but it's not going to work as you scale. So Cassandra's never going to allow that. But sometimes, you just want to do it, right? And you don't care about performance. You know, you're, you're suddenly not wanting your 10 millisecond query, you're wanting, you're happy to wait a minute or a day. Perhaps you want to run a report at the end of the week or the end of the day. And what you don't want to do, or you may want to, or some of the guys talking previously might want to because they'll earn lots of money, is build a whole new infrastructure for analytics. So that is take all of your data out of your operational database, be it Oracle or Couchbase, whatever, and then put it into, say, uh, HDFS, who here is like a, who would classify themselves as like building operational applications versus analytics, like, like business intelligence, things like that? Who is operational? Websites, apps, who here does more like analytical things? So who's a Hadoop user? Some of you are not even either, I'm not sure what you guys do. Anyway, so let's say that you, you built this big operational system and now you just want to do daily reports. Now, where I worked previously, this is exactly what we did. We pulled all of that data out. We put it into HDFS. We ran MapReduce on it, okay? Tens and tens of more computers, a whole new department, hiring a bunch of new people. However, if that's what you want and you're using Cassandra, then you can actually say, no, I'm gonna segregate these nodes and I'm gonna do my analytics directly